<clears throat> it is uh, February 18th, 2022. My name is Allie. The name of my channel is Allie's Big Toe because toe stands for theory of everything. The majority content of my videos is about my journey exiting the Jehovah's Witness organization and life after that. As a result of putting my story out on YouTube, I've had the privilege and opportunity to meet dozens, I don't know, maybe hundreds, but certainly dozens of beautiful individuals who are also, also survivors and thrivers um, in their lives after leaving that organization. This video is going to be quite different today. Part of me is like, is this even appropriate to make a video about this? But one of the, the, the topics I've been thinking about um, the last couple of weeks, there's been drama in the XJW community. <clears throat> and that was something I've been thinking about the last couple of weeks. Like, is there such a thing as an ex Jehovah's Witness community. Certainly when I was a Jehovah's Witness, I would definitely say, and I think it could be said that there is um, a huge Jehovah's Witness community. Mostly, it's like a spoke of a wheel. It centers around the local congregation that you belonged to, you belong to, and from there out are spokes, and you go to um, regional conventions, circuit conventions, international convention, conventions. I know personally, whenever we traveled internationally, um, we would attend meetings at the Kingdom Hall at the destination wherever we were going. And from there, we, we formed friendships, friendships that, um, that lasted up until I left, left the organization. So people I would stay in contact with internationally and would continue to, um, build relationships with on subsequent trips. So, does that exist in the ex Jehovah's Witness community? I, I'm sure, it like everything, you can't make generalizations. Everything is is relative and depends on what you make it. But what I'm processing today is, um, I just came home a couple minutes ago from um, the emergency room. My mom took my dad to the hospital because um, his health has been deteriorating over like the last week or so. <clears throat> my dad is 84 years old. I always forget how old he is because we don't celebrate birthdays. So half the time I exaggerate his age by a couple years and I'm like, my dad's 86, but my dad's 84. And uh, he got diagnosed with chronic lymphocytic leukemia about 16 years ago. Interesting side note, and I didn't realize this until I had done more research on that disease. Um, it's very different from acute uh, leukemia, which usually ends up taking people out rather quickly. Um, older people can live with chronic lymph lymphocytic leukemia for years and years and years, and um, generally what ends up happening towards the later stages is the person completely loses their appetite and interest in eating and drinking and and their body essentially starves to death. And because of the elevated white blood cell count, um, there's not enough room for red blood cells. And, and so fatigue and there's not the delivery system for, for nutrients and oxygen. So that's why a person deteriorates, which is why it's very common for people with CLL to receive blood transfusions. Um, so I would, um, guesstimate that there have perhaps been victims um, who who have needlessly died prematurely um, because they refused a, a blood transfusion. <clears throat> but today, um, the three of us, my dad primarily, you know, it's his decision, it's his life. Um, my mom and I all met with the hospice nurse and a hospice social worker and like having that conversation about <clears throat> going into hospice care, end of life care. And I don't know, like, it's no surprise we're all going to die, which is 
something for almost four decades of my life. I mean, it became more and more, talk about cognitive dissonance. It became more and more like, I can imagine it's difficult. Sorry, I know I'm like not finishing thoughts here. Um, I imagine for Jehovah's Witnesses who are still like fully mentally in that organization and that group think and that theology, that when they're confronted with the death of their loved ones, especially those who um, grew old and died, um, that's that has to be really difficult for a Jehovah's Witness to come to terms with because their entire life they were told that they were not going to grow old and they were not going to die. And that's still what they're being told today, this overlapping generation. Like the generation of 1914 is officially not on this earth. They have died. But yet Jehovah's Witnesses continue to teach their children things that I was taught as a child, like you're not going to graduate from high school, therefore don't go to college. You're not going to get married. You're not, you know, don't have children because Armageddon's going, you know, it's, and I believed all of that. So now being, you know, the reality of taking care of older parents and, um, yeah, it's not like I'm in any denial about this, but, um, I was very impressed by the professionalism and the genuine care of the hospice nurse who was in the room with us just talking about our options, choices, and she was so respectful and gave my father so much dignity um, in asking him these questions. And I was, that was very touching. Um, kind of made me think of like the ad hoc organization we came from where there wasn't a lot of higher education, at least <clears throat> not in the area where I'm from. Um, and back to community. <clears throat> so I'm sitting in the ER. I, my dad was taking a little nap, but we were just waiting on some results from a test and I'm sitting there and it dawned on me, like, I don't have to be in these feelings by myself. So I texted a handful of friends and immediately responses, beautiful responses started pouring in. Like, we're so sorry, Allie, whatever you need, like people offering, like, do you need food? Like immediately. And it just, in that moment, yes, there is an XJW community. I'm here, um... I left mentally around 2017 and I left officially in 2019. So 2020, 21, 22, like let's just say four years out. Um, my life today is the result of the effort I put into participating in the XJW community and forging relationships um, with people. And you know, you click with some and you don't click with others. And those just kind of organically dissipate. Although there's um, mutual feelings of respect, but the point is you don't have to be besties with someone just because they're also an XJW. Um, I think everything I'm saying is totally common sense. But also putting effort into your local community. And I'm just so thankful that I have support um, from both of those. And I don't say this to um, to shame like current Jehovah's Witnesses in my area. I get that they are under a deluding influence, um, an undue undue influence, high control, and they don't have the full capacity of their own mind because it's consumed with that group think. Um. However, with that being said, I feel for my mom because she's spent the last two years and she's not even officially disassociated or disfellowshipped, but with virtually, I want to say unilaterally or completely with no support from the local congregation here. And that's that I'm sad for my mom for that, but she's a trooper. Um, she's an extrovert, so she's made friends, but 
it's just sad. Like you give your, you give your life and yourself to an organization. She gave her life to this organization for 61 years. She was a special pioneer. She was a regular pioneer for years and years and years. Hall builds, you name it. Like she was, she was very involved and these people are not here now. Again, I don't say that as a guilt trip. But if you're watching this and you are still a Jehovah's Witness, that's something to consider. Because for me, everything goes back to, to Jesus and, and the example he showed. The prodigal son, the good Samaritan. Even when he was with his disciples and they told him to like tell the other person who wasn't part of their group to stop performing miracles or expelling demons. I forget what chapter it was. And Jesus just said, let them be. And so um, just going to really capitalize on this time now to keep my dad comfortable. He even made a funny joke today at the doctor's. <laughs> and uh, if this offends you, um, then dismiss what I'm about to say. <laughs> but it's my dad's truth and it's my truth also. So the nurses were... Um, assuring us of the vaccine status of all of them. And I'm just, we just sat there silently until my dad kind of garbled out, we don't like Dr. Fauci. <laughs> oh boy, what a couple years it's been, right? The, the, I almost said bubblers. I'm from the Midwest. The drinking fountains were locked up. You can't, you don't have access to water in a hospital. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble now. I just wanted to share this because community is precious and let's not let dramas and, and things, just like I was so sad that I couldn't just be um, a part of the Jehovah's Witness community, even though I held very different theology and belief. I just wanted to be allowed to like question and be in control of my own mind. <clears throat> um, being part of a community means that you're not always going to agree with everybody on everything, but can you still love each other? And can you still act respectfully? Can you still walk with grace, be gracious? So, um, especially I've been thinking about people who are newly exiting the organization. If you've, you know, because a lot of people like part of that process is doing a lot of research and you come across videos. And so I just want to say to anybody who's exiting right now that, um, I have zero regrets leaving that organization and it is not easy to rebuild your life, but it is absolutely possible and living with, um, Christian freedom and grace and a space where it's not my place to judge um, is the best life ever. And my dad woke up from his indoctrination in 1975, four years before I was born. And one of the things I said to my parents today when we were at the hospital was, Dad, like... <laughs> It's, that, it's like that movie Sliding Doors with Gwyneth Paltrow. Like, if you would have just tweaked one decision, like she didn't get on the train and her life went this way, and, if, and because she did get on the train, her life went this way. Like, um, like if my dad had been more firm in telling my mom, like, no, we're not going to be Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, would I have gone to college? Would, like, how would my life be different? But... Um, He's a very humble man, and I um, thank anybody for prayers of wisdom, comfort, and peace in my family now. So um, thank you for being a part of my journey. Thank you for allowing me to process, and shalom.